Well, Jane Denise, she has a boy wonder in an orphan she heard sing at the orphanage last week. Caruso, they call the 17-year-old boy. Jane wants to become his manager and help him to a career. She hasn't broached the subject yet to Mr. Race, and she seems a little nervous about it as we look in on the aces this evening and find her alone in the living room. Marge enters dressed. Marge, where are you going? I told you I'm going up to the corner movie. Oh, Marge, I told you I want you here tonight to help me. Oh, but this is the last night of that picture I've been wanting to see for months. Well, I've seen it. I'll tell you all about it. Stay home, Marge. Oh, you'll tell me about it, though. Yes, every bit of it, Marge. It'll be just like going there to see it, except for the bingo and the dishes. <laughs> oh, please, Marge, I need you here. Well, what for? <laughs> You keep saying you need me, but you won't tell me what it's about. Well, I just want you to be here when I tell him something tonight. Eh? Yes, it's very important. Well, what is it? Say, is something wrong? Wrong? No, stop jumping at convulsions. It's something very right, if you ask me. Well, I am asking you. What is it? And what have I to do with it? Well, you haven't anything to do with it, but it's just that when you're here, it'll be easier to explain. You always know the right thing to say and things like that. You know how you can be, Marge. Oh, sure. And I always say that about you, Marge. You know I do. Yes, yes. Well, I do always say Marge is the cleverest person. Oh, yes. You always know the right thing. All right. You can cut out the blinding. No, Marge, this isn't baloney. I mean it. <laughs> Oh, you have to do it for me, Marge. You'll be very interested, too. Interested in what? You'll have to wait till I tell him. Well, if that's the best you can do, I'm going to move it. No way. Come back here. Well, if you can hold my interest. Otherwise, nothing doing. Now, James, what have you been up to? Well, um, uh, I've been up to the orphanage. To the orphanage? Yes, this morning, and I had a long talk with Mrs. Duffy about... Um, what... What did you say? I had a long talk with Mrs. Duffy about... About what? That's as far as I'll tell you. Now, if that doesn't hold your interest, then I don't know what will. Oh, Jane, you're not going to leave me high and dry like this, are you? That's as far as I'll tell you. To be continued later on. Oh, here he is now. Where are you going, Mars? Well, I was going to a movie, but not now. Why? What's the matter? Well, I don't know yet. Jane just told me she was out to the orphanage this morning to see Mrs. Duffy about. See Mrs. Duffy about? Oh, Mars, you're not telling it right. Will you let me? Well, I wish you would. What is it, Jane? What's happened? Well, well, sit down, dear. It's a long story. Sit down. That's right. Yes? Well, here's the whole thing in the cell hole. You remember last time Toby gave a party and I went out to rehearse the children and the songs I wanted them to sing? Yes. Do you remember, dear? Yes, yes, go on. Well, there was one boy there they called Caruso. He's the leader of the singing. And I heard him sing. Well, he had the most beautiful voice I ever heard. I couldn't get it out of my mind. So this morning, I got a marvelous idea. <laughs> to get his love. Yes. Yes. And I went out to the orphanage and had a long talk with Mrs. Duffy about, now well, here's where I left off, Marge, about Caruso. Well, here's where I came in, so I guess I can leave now for that movie I wanted to see. Oh, Marge, no. Dear, make her wait. Let's sit around, Marge. Let's find out what's going on here. Oh, but I want to see this picture. This is much more important than a picture. This is a chance to give this boy a chance to become a great singer. This is whose chance? Our chance. I'm going to become his manager. What? Like, what? Yes, I talked to Mrs. Duffy about it. I've got a protege. A protege? That's what she calls it. Well... Hey, you're not going to adopt this boy. Oh, no, not adopt. Just see to it that he gets a chance to sing to somebody that can help him. Because I know when a boy has a voice like that, he shouldn't be wasting it thinking at an orphanage. Oh, what do you know about a beautiful voice? Have you an ear for music? I certainly have. Two of them. Oh, two of them, huh? And I've got two eyes, too, haven't I? And didn't I see him sing? Well, what singing him got to do with it? Well, any time I hear somebody sing as high as he does, and they don't get red in the face, well, that's what I call a singer. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's a great music critic for you. Well, he doesn't get red in the face. Oh, I see. You two don't believe it. Well, how would you like to see it yourself? Well, I don't think I'd care to make the trip way out there just to see a boy sing that doesn't get red in the face. Well, I mean, that's just it. You won't have to. I'm bringing him here. Well, that's just... You what? You're bringing him here. When? Tomorrow night. Oh, now, wait a minute. No, you wait a minute. All my life, I've done everything you wanted me to do. And if you say no, I don't do it. Everything you want. Now, this is one time I'm putting my foot in it. 
Oh, how pretty you are. You're pretty your face. Now, I don't see anything to laugh about, Maude. Well, I do, Jay. That's all. I didn't want to stay here hear this. You asked me to. Well, yes, but don't laugh until you're spoken to. All right, Jane. Stop that dickering. I didn't dick. She laughed at everything a person oh, said. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry, Jay. <laughs> I won't laugh. Go on with your story. What's going to happen with this boy prodigy? Prodigy. No, Jane. He's your protege, but he himself is a protege. Now, don't start making me up. He's my protege. Oh, he's your protege already? You told him so? Well, I hope so. But first, I want you and Mark to see him sing. See him, huh? Yes. I want you to see how high he sings. Without I... getting red in the face, I know. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is he coming tomorrow night? Well, that's what I planned. Now, uh, is it all right, dear? Well, uh, are you asking me or telling me? Well, if you say yes, I'm asking you. If you say no, I'm telling you. Oh, <laughs> I see. Well, that leaves me quite a margin of choice, doesn't it? And you have to be here too, Mark. Oh, you can count on me. I wouldn't miss that for the world. Yeah, I think why, don't you glad to say that? Well, wait just a minute, though, Jane. Suppose this boy comes here and we hear him say. And see him. Yes, and see him. And uh, he is a wonder, as you say, Jane. Uh... What then? What then? Well, I'm going to be his manager. And I'm going to see to it that he gets his things somewhere besides just an orphanage. Oh, an opera, maybe, huh? Opera? Why, he might even be good enough for the radio. <laughs> yes, I never thought of that. <laughs> the main thing is I'm going to be his manager. And I'm going to get so many people to hear him sing that the name of Caruso will be known to everybody. Oh, uh, <clears throat> just a minute, Jane. I think there was a singer once named uh, Caruso. Well, I say there was a singer once, a great singer. His name was Caluso. What program was he on? What program was he on? <laughs> he wasn't on any program. He was the greatest singer of his day. Didn't you ever hear, uh, Pagliacci? <laughs> oh, Pagliacci. You know, uh, Edi Pagliacci. da 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 Oh, dear, dear. oh, well, maybe you'd like to manage me instead of that boy. Oh, huh? oh, oh, well, one at a time, dear. Maybe next. Oh, thanks, Jane. Oh, stop it, Jane. So, uh, there was a singer named Caruso. Well, what's in the name, I always say. Oh, you do, huh? Rose or any other name would smell as sweet. What are you talking about? About Caruso. I guess he doesn't know about it. He's only 17. Mrs. Debbie said if he had the right training and everything, he could be the a... The right guy. training? Yes, we might have to take some lessons, I guess. And none of us are perfect, you know, dear. Yeah, well, uh, who pays for these lessons? Now, that's the part I want to talk now, about. Now, that's the part I don't want to hear about. I knew it, I knew it. I knew the minute something would cost a few paltry dollars, you'd start saying no. I have enough expenses as it is. I knew it. Everybody gets some pleasure out of our money but me. Oh, Jane, now, I wouldn't say that. How it... about your oldest sister's sister's youngest boy and your younger sister's oldest girl? Oh, when they have their tonsils taken out, who pays for that? Well, if your singer has to have his tonsils out, I don't see why I should have... He said he had to have his tonsils out. Well, you brought up the subject, Jane. I'm not talking about his tonsils. I'm talking about their tonsils. Oh, his tonsils are all right, huh? Yes. You just wait till you hear them. Oh, oh wait till I hear them. Now, I think that's the sensible solution. Why go into a long-winded family argument about what's going to happen before we hear the boy? Yeah, that's right. You're right, Mark. Well, thanks, Jane. See, Mark, isn't that much nicer than just laughing? You <laughs> see, dear, first we'll hear him sing. Then we can talk about what we'll do after that. That's what she means. I know what she means. Then we'll be here tomorrow night. Now, the next thing we have to do is to get this piano in tune. Oh, more money now. Oh, stop worrying about money. We can't have him singing if the piano isn't in tune, can we? Well, how do you know it's not in tune? You haven't played it lately, have you? Well, that's just it. Nobody has played it. It needs tuning. And look at all these pieces of music scattered around. Does your boy want to read music? I wonder... Well, maybe you can sing one of the things you have there. No, he's going to sing what he sang to me at the orphanage this morning. It's called Freeze. It's beautiful. Oh, is that all we're going to hear? One song? Well, maybe more. He can't sing these things. These are mostly piano music. Look. Prelude by Serge Rachmaninoff. Serge Rachmaninoff, huh? Well, that's what it says here. <laughs> oh, it's pronounced so good. 
Sergey, S-E-R-G-E? Yes, it's Sergey, and you've got to pronounce it correctly now that you're becoming an impresario. I have not. I'm just going to be his manager. Well, that's what I mean, Jane. You have to get back to all these musical terms so you can speak intelligently on the subject when you try to promote a career for your protege. Oh, I guess I can talk as intelligent as anybody else if I have to. I dare you. All right, I will. I never took it there, and I won't now. Well, be intelligent enough to see that this is going to get you into a lot of trouble. Well, what? But what's a little trouble if we can make this boy a success? It's his big chance, dear. Yes, I know. That's what you say. And you'll say it, too, when you hear him sing. And so will everybody else when they hear him. Well, who who are you going to have hear him sing? Different people. I'm going to take him to everybody until he gets to be a success. Oh, yes. And uh, that's another thing. I want him to look his best, dear. You do? Huh? Yes. So don't you think we ought to do something about that first? Uh, what he asked. Series, uh, here her next answer is, what we do about that? Well, I think we should buy him a suit. I thought so. Well, he needs a dear something neat. You know, a blue Sergei. A blue Sergei suit, huh? <laughs> <yeah. laughs> well, Jane has hurdled the first jump in her career as manager to the boy singer. We hear him give his private audition for Mr. Ace and Marge when next we meet the Easy Ace. 